Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. This is 22nd and 6th Avenue. The house we lived in was here. Of course, it's completely changed now. I would have been eight years old. That would have been 43. This is the place where my father trapped our coal bin because our land warlord was stealing coal from our bin. He put a board across, put a big jug full of water, and with a rope tied it to the door to the, to the coal bin. So, and it just had it balanced so that he opened the door. It would come crashing down just about head high. And sure enough, one day he came down and um, the, uh, he was going to work and he saw the landlord with a big bandage on his head. And he went downstairs and his blood all over the place down there. Stopped him from stealing the, the uh, coal. This is Greenwood Cemetery. And this is where me and my two older sisters, Marge and Emily, used to, we used to wander around in there because it was the only green spot around. So we used to just walk around and, and uh, enjoy the flowers and look at the headstones. And we became very friendly with the uh, old couple who were the caretakers. And they lived in a caretaker's house up the street on the next block up. And they used to invite us in for, to sit in their garden and have milk and cookies and spend the afternoon. And the kids would come and sleigh ride all the way down this hill, right across this street and right down to Fifth Avenue. And one kid went all the way down right across the street, right under the wheels of a streetcar. And that was the last time we went doing any uh, sledding down the hill. This is St. Thomas Aquinas Church, where me and my brothers and sisters all went, and we went to St. Thomas Aquinas School. And this is the rectory over here. I got kicked off the choir because I played hooky from the choir. And the choir teacher dragged me back. She gave me a slap. <laughs> and I called her a son of a bitch. <laughs> In the rectory. Right? And I got thrown off the choir. But that's all right, because I had already been thrown off the altar boys, because I refused to learn the Latin. So <laughs> I didn't have a good reputation. I think I made my first Holy Communion here. But it looks exactly the same. This is uh, John Jay Vocational High School. And when I, went, when I went here, it was manual training vocational high school. Looks the same, because it looked bigger then, but I guess it was, it was the biggest school I'd ever been in. But uh, some memories here. Nothing particularly good, but memories. I left here shortly after my 16th birthday. Uh, so I was here for two years. I had to go work full time. Uh, my father was uh, out of work, one of his many times out of work, and uh, needed some more income. And so uh, I was the oldest son, uh, and I had to go to work. That didn't make much difference because he died within six months of that, and I would have had to go to work anyway. So. Right here where these houses are, this was all one property that went all the way back. The house that we rented was right there. I moved the family here when I was not quite 17, because after my father died. Besides the social security that my mother got, I was the sole support of the family. It was my mother, myself, my two younger sisters, and my two brothers. There were peach trees, 57 rose bushes, and we had a nice terrace on the front. Two brothers, we could wheel them out on the terrace in their wheelchairs. It was just a beautiful place. This is the famous Brennan Cars Roast Beef Emporium. And a trip back home to, to uh, Sheepshead Bay is not just a trip until you stop here and have the greatest roast beef in the world. Anytime I come back home, I stop here. I was probably 20 years old the first time I came in here. This would be our jumping off point to go to a party or a barbecue or a clam bake. I actually picked up a girl sitting in a bar with a bunch of friends in here. And out that window, she was waiting for a bus. And I picked her up. And uh, we went out on a couple of dates, and that was it. This is the Baron de Kalb Council, uh, number 1073. I was the editor of the newspaper 
I was on the board of directors, and all of my friends were here. So this is really like home. It went for two more, it went for five, five votes before they finally got a majority. It's in, the, it's in that newsletter. Jack Shelley became one of my best friends. Uh, Jack Shelley was a great guy. <laughs> guy was very friendly, that's the way it was here. Yeah. You could walk up the bar, strike up a conversation, and I remember one time we, when I first came here, the old place, there was like a rectangular bar, seating on three sides. And I come in one night, and somebody said, Fitz, what are you having? And I said, yeah, give me a beer. And the guy at the end of the bar said, what's your name? I said, Tom Fitzgerald. And he left. And he said, my name's Tom Fitzgerald. And the guy on the other th the third side of the bar said, wait a minute, my name's Tom Fitzgerald. There were three Tom Fitzgeralds at the bar, and none of us knew each other. Wow. None of us had ever met before. <laughs> this is where I learned how to swim. This fence wasn't here. There were steps going down to a float, and the kids used to dive off the float, and most of them could swim across to the other side and swim back. These are little kids. We used to call them water rats. So one day I decided, you know, I'm like 19 years old. I better learn how to swim. Right. And I decided that the easiest way to learn how to swim was just go down there and dive in. And that's what I did. I dove in, and I swam around for a while, dog paddled, came back, and kept doing that until I could swim. We had a lot of great parties out here. We used to have clam bakes and barbecues. 13 Ocean Court. We moved here shortly after uh, we got married. It's the one with the window air conditioning unit. That was our bedroom. <laughs> Chris's little room was like the end of a little corridor. His cute little apartment, but the landlord was a pain in the neck. And so they had in the paper. And so Mrs. Toyer took us around. She brought us upstairs. She said, this is the kitchen, and that's the stove. And that's the refrigerator. Oh, and this is the bathroom. That's the sink. That's the tub. <laughs> she introduced us to all the appliances. Every time we'd walk, somebody would walk in the house, his daughter lived on the second floor. She'd follow down the stairs and sweep the stairs. After every single visitor, she was a clean freak. And then one day, uh, Mr. Toya, the landlord, stopped your mother on the street and told us she was hanging her laundry wrong. <laughs> we were here a year and then moved to Queens because your grandfather died then and so we moved to Queens.